So this brings us to precipitation hardening. We know that in a material, we talked about this under strengthening mechanisms, that if you have precipitates of a different phase in your material, these strengthen your material. And the reason why is because in a region around your material, you end up with strain fields, right? The whole lattice surrounding that precipitate is strained because of mismatch between the host and the precipitate. And therefore, if you've got a dislocation that's traveling through your material, it's going to travel and it's going to get... Um, it's going to interact with these strain fields and oftentimes they park near them, right? And if the dislocation can't move because it's, uh, wants to, it's pinned by this precipitate um, or if it can't travel through it, in either case, you've made it harder for the dislocation to move so you've strengthened your material, right? So now the question is, okay, we know the mechanism by which it works, but how do these things grow over time? Um, if this is your material right now, it might be super saturated with, let's say you've got um, aluminum with copper in it. And right now the aluminum and copper are just mixed uniformly throughout. But that's up here as a liquid. When you start to cool it down, eventually you end up in this region. So from here to here, you end up with a complete solid solution. So the copper is dissolved in with your aluminum everywhere. So you would have grains everywhere, just like this. Okay. And the copper and the aluminum are mixed in uniformly. But the second you go below this line right here, at that point, when you go below that line, what you start to form is now kappa plus what they're calling theta, right? So you've got your solid solution plus another phase, a copper rich phase, you know, is coming out over there. So if you held this for a really long time at a high temperature, we know that it would want to form, where would the theta phase form? It's going to want to form along the grain boundaries, right? Because that's the, the highest energy spot in the crystal. So it's going to want to replace that high energy spot in the crystal with this new phase, right? Because if you're going to form a surface, you might as well get rid of an old surface. That only happens if you give it enough time and temperature for all the copper. All this copper has to diffuse to these grain boundaries, right? So what if this happens at a low temperature or for a short time? In that case, what if your aluminum can only, or your copper can only travel a little ways, right? The stuff near the grain boundaries will get there, but this stuff, it can't get there. It's too far away from it. So instead what you get is instead of it forming along the grain boundaries, you form precipitates, right? So now your structure might look something like this. You had your grain boundaries from before. So if I just kind of eyeball these from before, instead of your new phase forming along the grain boundaries, you're going to get a bunch of your precipitates happening in the bulk of your grains, right? These precipitates. And then of course, as you hold this for longer and longer or do it at higher and higher temperatures, these precipitates will grow, right? They might get uh, larger and larger and larger. So that's what you're seeing here in this diagram as they hold it for different times. Here's if you quench it, you don't see any precipitates. If you age it, then you start to see precipitates forming. And then if you overage it, then they're going to grow and, and take over, right? And you can see that here they're plotting hardness as a function of time under annealing. And you see this initial rise and you see a maximum where you get the maximum amount of your dislocations not being able to travel through this lattice, right? Um, but if you overage it and these things grow too large, it becomes easy for a dislocation to travel past it again. And so then you start to see a reduction in hardness. So it's interesting, it's not just composition that's controlling your strength with precipitation hardening. It's also the processing conditions. How long did you anneal this thing for? You can actually overdo it and actually lose your strength uh, forming there, right? So that's precipitation hardening, and you can see why kinetics would play an important role there because you want to model the rate of growth of your precipitates since those are going to influence hardening.